This week, we're wowed by the bright lights of the big city. I think it's the best thing you've ever found, ever. I want to buy it now. <laughs> and bowled over by the charm of the Cotswolds. <gasps> you happy? Very happy. But the road to finding the right house has a few bumps along the way. She's going to kill him if he stays stun for much longer. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah I, don't, I need to know, I don't know how you feel about this house. The pressure's on. She's spending a vast amount of money, and I'm here to try and make sure she does it sensibly. And it's down to us to deliver. Welcome. Wow. To the penthouse flat. <laughs> This week, we're catching up with two very different searches. In London, we had our youngest ever house hunter with our biggest ever budget. And in the Cotswolds, we had a newly engaged couple desperate to buy their first family home. What they shared in common was determination and bags of it. Three years ago, wedding bells were ringing in the Cotswolds for newly engaged couple Isabel Phillips and Chris Martin, who were keen to walk into their first home before walking down the aisle. They were searching in and around villages in Gloucestershire. While last year, I was concentrating my efforts on London's South Bank for 18-year-old student Claire Winship. She was looking for her first home with a stellar budget of £1.7 million and was keen to find a prime spot on the River Thames. Having moved from Oxfordshire, first-year student Claire is loving her newfound independence in the capital, and it means more to her than most. She was born with cerebral palsy and needs round-the-clock care, but that certainly hasn't stopped her enjoying university life. I've just finished first year, which is doing great fun. A lot of challenges to start with, but I've enjoyed all the new friends and being in London and all the student life. That has to Fairly's quite active social life, she's made a lot of friends on her course. She like, doesn't let her disability hold her back at all in any way. <laughs> Claire's condition occurred due to complications at birth and she's recently been awarded financial compensation in a personal injury settlement. The seven-figure payout made Claire a multi-millionaire overnight. It's held in trust and is to last her for the rest of her life. She's determined to invest her payout wisely and has set aside 1.7 million for a home which will enable her to live as independently as possible. <laughs> Lord, Lord, me, <laughs> Compton Avenue. It's really important to me that I'm as independent as I can be. Um, I always need carers, but if I have my own place, I can adapt to it and change things and. Just make it so I can do as much as I can on my own. She wants to be right in the heart of all that London has to offer, and her search focuses on the South Bank. Being both central and close to the river makes it one of the most expensive places in London to buy. I'm looking for a property along the Thames, I do, um, on the South Bank. But I just love the whole atmosphere along that stretch of the Thames. There's always something happening, always lots of food, lots of people and buzz, and I want to be part of it. The South Bank has proved to be a good place to buy. Even in the downturn, it held its value better than most, so should tick Claire's investment box. Nevertheless, I'm feeling the pressure of helping a teenage millionaire buy her first home. It's a huge responsibility. Well, here we are, wonderful day, banks of the Thames. Yes. Fantastic spot. And I know this is kind of where you want to be, isn't it? This is yes. the view that you're looking right for. Right here will be great, yes. I just want to be able to pop downstairs and walk into some London life, yeah. OK. How are you feeling about things? Because I'm very mindful this is quite a daunting thing that, that you're going through. You haven't had your 19th birthday quite yet. No. Um, this is a significant sum of money that, that you're going to be investing. I've done a lot in the last nine months I've never done before. Yeah. And this is important to me. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, a lot of good. Good for you. Well, we're not going to find it here. No, we are. So we should make a start. <laughs> So Claire obviously needs a good investment, three bedrooms for her and her live-in carers, and an easy 20-minute commute to university. She wants to be on the South Bank in a place with a fantastic river view, as well as easy access to shops, restaurants and bars. 
She's happy to spend around 1.7 million, but can go considerably higher for the right investment. It may be a lot of money, but it's never easy matching people with property. And in such a competitive area, the extra cash doesn't necessarily make this task any easier. Claire wasn't the only house buyer in search of some independence. Isabel and Chris were planning their new life as Mr and Mrs. But as a live-in nanny and an army captain staying in barracks, they'd never set up home together, never mind bought a house. We've been together for over six years now, and the longest we've spent together at any one time is about four weeks. So it would be a massive benefit to have a place we can live together, and which, we, which we haven't had. No. Isabel has always stayed with families in live-in nanny quarters, and army boy Chris wants to ensure their new location is as safe as houses when duty calls. And one of them has some very specific ideas about their new home. No, no. <laughs> Vito. <laughs> No. 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 Wait, wait, wait. Obviously, I'd like my two bedrooms, good sized bedrooms, and um, a living area so I can put all my stuff out and make it my own. So, or our own, I should say. <laughs> Quite right. Oh dear, I sense trouble ahead unless someone remembers that after he carries her over the threshold, he's going to be staying. Hey, hello. hello. Nice to meet you. It's clear looking around, guys, that you're still really. You know, having your youth, that clubbing is at the heart of, of your existence. <laughs> <laughs> that you're not, not, not looking to nest in any way. No, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Give me your dream marital home. A family home is, is, what, is what I'm looking for. Um, the actual... The nitty-gritty of the house doesn't actually bother me that much, as much as it, as it does Isabel. For 210 grand, Isabel and Chris want at least two bedrooms for their new marital home. They would love a large kitchen and a garden. And they'd prefer a period house with no work to do in a small village. The hunt is on to find two first homes, both for buyers with high expectations. We're looking in the Cotswolds for a cosy marital home for newly engaged Chris and Isabel at £210,000. Well, we've got £1.7 million to find a plush apartment in London for student Claire. Claire's using part of a seven-figure personal injury settlement to fund her purchase. It might be our biggest budget to date, but it's not all plain sailing, and I'm drafting in Kirsty for the afternoon to help me out. Well, I know you wanted to be on the south, so we're coming to have a look at the flat in there. Wow. And um, you're familiar with it? I am. I have seen a couple in that village. Yeah, I love the atmosphere. Lots of bars and restaurants and people. So, first impression's good? Great, definitely. We're in Vauxhall on the western boundary of the search area and at £1.75 million, this three-bed apartment offers everything Claire wants. The bedrooms aren't huge, but that's the price you pay for being right on the riverbank and close to all the action. Up on the 13th floor, full river frontage. It is a wow space. It's silly to walk in here and sort of pretend that we're viewing a normal no, flat. No, no, we're not no, viewing no, a normal, normal flat. What's the thing that stands out? Um, for me, it's space and it's a great view out there. Yeah. And um, it's so light and airy and modern. This is a great flat, but all flats in this price range are going to be impressive. And I'm keen to root out what's most important to Claire in this search. Would you say your principal concern is finding somewhere which delivers the greatest amount of independence? Yes. Right. Yeah, uh, investment is a second to that. Right. Definitely. It's my life. It's not about my... All the time, yeah. Of course, I have to consider that to the future. But I'm, yeah, I want to enjoy it. <laughs> so independence is more important than investment for Claire, but we can't let either out of our sight. It is extraordinary how adamant she is about the independence. Mm. And obviously that is a huge, huge part of this. This is who I am. This is the money that is my compensation. Yeah. This is where I'm going to spend it. This is my future. I'm going to look yeah. after myself. Yeah. 
Easy navigation is a key part of Claire's independence. Is it good enough? The bedroom is a bit small, um, but I can do that, you know, it's all about compromise. I've said it for years, but this really illustrates it. There are compromises with every budget. Well, not the gold star quite yet. No. This week, we're catching up with two searches. Student Claire is living it up in the capital with a £1.7 million budget, while Army Captain Chris and Nanny Isabel are buying their first home in the Cotswolds for 210 grand. Mary Poppins may have been able to pull a lamp out of her handbag, but are you going to be able to pull a dream house out of yours? I'll do my best. I'm helping Isabel and Chris search for their marital home. They're on the hunt for a safe two-bedroomed house with a separate kitchen and living area, which needs no work. We're starting our search in a quiet modern development in Morton and Marsh, east of Cheltenham. It's a pretty market town filled with bars, cafes and traditional Cotswold stone properties. With two bedrooms, a decent kitchen and three bathrooms, this could be a good first property for them. It's only two years old and needs no work, so they could move straight in. It's 20 grand over budget, but in a buyer's market, everything's negotiable. Right, guys. So, first room we see together. Now, you, you were quite quiet on the way in. <laughs> no. First like impressions? It, yeah. It oh, looks... look, 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 I see shoulders. I read body uh, language. OK. <laughs> no, no, no. It's nice. Right, now. Kitchen diner. It's a bit on the small side. Telling me. Yeah, it is yep. quite small. I can't see me I mean, entertaining you... around that, Yeah, really. you would struggle to entertain around that, wouldn't you? You said when we first chatted that you thought the first house would be a reality check. Is it less or more of a reality check than you were expecting? I'm. I thought it would be really bad. Um, I thought you'd take us to something that would be <gasps> open my eyes and go, uh oh. You thought I would manipulate the situation <laughs> never, for never. my own ends. <laughs> no. What <laughs> kind of monster do you think I am? I, I'm. I'm more impressed, definitely. Yeah. And because it has. Da -da -dum, moving on, ladies and gentlemen, a garden and a garage. <laughs> That's my Sorry. line. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sorry. <laughs> come on, out you come. Come and see the garden and the garage. Now, here we are. It's not a golf course, but enough room for a paddling pool and a sand pit. This house is small, but it's what they can afford in their dream location. And it's in immaculate condition. All Chris would have to do is lift her over the threshold. What do you think of this? Of oh, this room? I think it's a bit small. I can't. You couldn't fit a double bed, bed in here at all. You're thinking about people visiting. Yeah. I mean, what sort? Of, if we're going to have a second bedroom, I don't see the point of us having a single bed. So, guys, you've seen it all now. Yep. First house we've seen together. It is. What do you think? It's the space upstairs. Yeah, um, right. Um, the ensuite upstairs is, is wasted on us. Yes. Yeah, no, that is the problem with modern developments. There are three loos in that house. Yeah. I don't want to clean three loos. No, exactly. <laughs> no, not if you're having to do it like every day, which is what proper people do, clean their loos every day. <laughs> <laughs> it appears that size is indeed everything for Isabel and Chris. But increasing the size does mean compromising on something else like location or property style. And in London, it's no easier when you're trying to find a flat worth millions. Claire recently received a seven-figure personal injury settlement and she's set aside part of it to fund the purchase. It's a huge decision. I'm pinning my hopes on this three-bedroom penthouse in the middle of Claire's search area, close to Borough High Street. Views of the Thames scored highly in the last property, so it's a bit of a risk to move away from the banks of the river but you'd be hard-pushed to miss any of London's landmarks from this fantastic roof terrace. It's on at £1.75 million, and at 2,100 square feet, it's far bigger than anything else we've seen, providing plenty of open space for Claire to get around easily. Welcome. Wow. To the penthouse flat. <laughs> We've got all these windows. <laughs> 
Look at that view, look at that terrace. Wow, look at all that. You really do get a sense of the city. You can't see the river, but you've replaced boats with people and activity and action. It is properly 360 degrees. It is, you see that every part of London. I mean, this terrace mm. is just... Yeah, perfect. It all seems very positive and gleeful. Yes, I want to buy it now. <laughs> <laughs> Claire loves this place and I don't blame her. It's fantastic. But any teenager would be bowled over by a party flat like this, so I need to be doubly sure this is right for her. She's going to do what she wants to do. It's nothing to do with her wheelchair and her conditions. In fact, she's 18. She's spending a vast amount of money, and I'm here to try and make sure she does it sensibly. Yeah, well, she sensibly enough called on oh. you. It's a great find, Phil. I think it's the best thing you've ever found, ever. Well, I just, oh, I just want it to be right. It is right. It is right. It's a happy flat. Looking at this kind of budget, we're able yeah. to show you very nice flats. Yes. Yeah. But how are you feeling about actually laying down that kind of cash? Yes, it is a hell of a lot of money, but then my situation is a bit different. Mm -hmm. And if that's what it costs for me to have the home that I want and that's accessible enough, then that's fine. That's what it costs? Yeah. You see, Phil, no need for all that worry after all. In the Cotswolds, Nanny Isabel and Soldier Chris are looking for their dream marital home. They weren't too sure they could entertain all their family and friends in the last house I showed them. So I'm hoping they'll both love this much larger home. Now, I'm learning to read your body language very quickly, Isabel. Yes. Either you're disapproving of having Phil Spencer here with us... <laughs> <laughs> or you no, don't... that's the best bit. <laughs> or you don't like this street. Um, to be honest, I'm not 100% happy with the street. Well, that, uh, does that make you nervous, yeah. the van I reversing? Like I just don't like it. But it, you don't spend your life standing in the street. I know, but I just, it's just the noise aspect of it. I mean, hey, Chris, Chris look, thinks you're being daft, I can tell. I'm, I'm OK, I don't mind yeah. it. I'm, no, he, he does. I, I look forward to getting in and seeing what it's like inside. Okey doke. The, the vans have got to be a, a sign of people spending money on their houses, doing yeah. it up, investing yeah. in the area. That's exactly, true. yeah. Well done. You see, Phil can put a spin on anything. <laughs> He's the spin meister. Come on. Let's get in there. Not a great start, I grant you, but I'm hoping Isabel will be bowled over by the space inside. This terraced house has three bedrooms, a large kitchen and dining area, a separate sitting room and a good-sized garden. And despite Isabel's reaction, she hasn't just stepped into one of Chris's war zones. This is actually a genteel cul-de-sac. I like the inside. Um, there's still a few things. It's that, it's that first impression of the front of the house. Mm. It's bothering me. Mm. The garden, I prefer the garden yesterday. And it's a lot quieter. It's the sound uh, of traffic. Uh, I don't know that it's that helpful to keep comparing in your own in, no, no, in, in your is. mind. No, right, you're wrong, Phil. It's, it is. It's it's useful to learn from different elements. No, I'm going to disagree with you, okay. Phil. Yesterday we walked away saying, probably not too small upstairs. Mm. Now Isabel's coming to this house, which is bigger by I reckon 100, 200 square feet. Mm. Okay. And she's harking back to the peace and quiet of the previous house. But one thing that I'm bit worried about would be I don't think I'd feel as safe in this house as I would in the other one. I take Izzy's point on the security um, because yesterday was was so was. so quiet uh, and you did feel safe when you when you were there. But right now I think you boys should go away because Isabel feels bullied. Mm. She's looking a bit bullied. <laughs> yes, <laughs> she's looking a bit bullied. Okay, uh, we'll go upstairs. Chris. Okay. Right. Do you want to see the sitting room? Yes. Yeah. Now, I am not here, and you know that, Isabel, to bully you... No, no, no. ..into considering a house which you feel is absolutely not you. But I want you to... Just... I just feel this room's a bit dark. It's an evening room. It's not a room you're no. going to sit in in the day. The kitchen is where one spends one's daylight time for the most part. You're either out at work or no, you're yeah, true. in the kitchen. And then in the evening, you come in here, you cosy up, you draw the curtains. Yeah. You seem quite sort of relaxed about things, Chris. <laughs> I am. I'm pretty... Uh, I think the thing I'm conscious of is the fact that I am still going to be at work during the week and then potentially could be away for periods mm. of time. So it's important for, 
it's more important for me to know that Izzy's happy in the house. Because um, she'll be spending she, yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, all I'm looking for really is, is the family home to come back to. You want to thump Chris at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I totally sympathise because he's walking into every house and going, yeah, that's great, a man's do. perspective. He's not seeing it from a woman's, you know. It's rather touching. He just wants you settled, doesn't he? He does, yes. That's the bathroom. That's quite spacious, isn't it? Yeah, and the second bedroom. You see, you could easily get a double bed in here. Yeah, but look at all the work we'll have to do. Is Isabel looking at a different house to me? Hello. Hiya. Well, she still looks a bit miserable, and I'm sure it's not because I've turned up. No, it's not because you've turned up. No, I really like Isabel, but she is as particular and likes everything as well presented as she is. There's a tiny, weeny little bit of princess in her. OK. Well, the question is, could we, be, could we be happy here once no. we had done that work? I don't think I could. He is staying stummies. She's going to kill him if he stays stum for much longer. Oh, really? Yeah, she wants his back up. And, well, um, she wants him to have opinions and all. Yeah. Oh, I thought he yeah. was keeping stumps because no. she was being very vocal. No, no. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? I'm just not feeding it. OK, well, that's the answer. What, how, well, what about you? Well, no. No, sorry. That's... What? No, that's fine, because I've said. What, sorry? No, I've just said that. That's the answer. All right, well, don't, because it makes me look as if it's just me. Yeah, but that's the, I, don't, I need that's to the know. I don't know how you feel about this much. house, because I mean, this is just me. I, I don't feel happy. I think there's far too much work here for us. Okay. Well, we're a couple, aren't we? So if one of us doesn't like it, another one's not going to force the person to live here. So. Okay, that's fine. All right. Yeah. Let's go and have a look at the next one. <laughs> This week, we're back with two searches with two strong-minded women at the helm. Claire is looking for a cool pad in London close to the social scene on the South Bank, while Isabel is driving the hunt for her dream home in the Cotswolds with fiancé Chris. But for Isabel, there's perhaps a little too much dream and not enough reality. However, I shall not be defeated. I've got great confidence in our next property, and it's going to win through. So, you've got the white picket fence, really. <laughs> Thumbs up so far? Yep, definitely, so far. So far, so good. That's what I like to hear. A much better start than last time. With two bedrooms, a separate living room and a pretty rear garden, this could really work for them. It is £5,000 over their £210,000 budget, but in this buyer's market, there's always a deal to be done. And I've got a plan up my sleeve that can make all the difference. So, in we come. I want to show you the sitting room first of all. Right. Oh, wow. Rather. Gosh. It's oh, nice, yeah. isn't it? Very, very nice, yeah. It's a nice big room. It's beautiful. Yeah. <gasps> oh, my word! Belfast <laughs> Sink. <laughs> Are you a fan of Belfast Sink? She is. Yeah. It's she's, a lovely, al she's always wanted one. It's a lovely rustic kitchen, this huge window. I'm just going to have to stop we you. We need to ask yeah. price, Kirsty. I'm getting a bit emotional. <laughs> <laughs> The price isn't the worst we've seen. Right. It's on the market at 215,000. And what I'm going to say now is just utterly heartbreaking. So just don't scream at me. No. <laughs> if you pay that level for a house, I would want you to seriously consider not moving into it for the time being. Mm -hmm. OK? Because to be able to put a year or 18 months rent under your belt would make those first few months with a new baby when you didn't want to be working mm. much more relaxing. Hold your horses, Kirsty. They're not over the threshold yet, but you do make a valid point. With both of them working with live-in accommodation, they're in an almost unique situation to buy a house and stabilise their finances. They'd be crazy not to at least consider your advice. Can you think you can fit a double bed? Yeah, I think you could fit a double bed. Not a big one, but sort of queen size. No. It's Almost a nice little room, isn't it? No, definitely. It's a nice view. Beautiful. So, we found the dream. This is the house. And all Isabel wants is for Chris to carry her over the threshold. But I want them to rent this house for two years and wait for the dream, because that's the way to secure their financial future. What's the likelihood of me succeeding in that ambition? Nil, I reckon. But we'll see. 
You happy? Very happy. Good. Got everything that I wanted and <laughs> more. <laughs> Excellent. So, with any luck, that's Chris and Isabel sorted. In London, I'm still flying high on the success of the penthouse viewing and feeling confident enough to play a wild card. We're moving to the easterly point of Clare's search area in Shad Thames. This three-bedroom warehouse conversion cleverly mixes character with a more contemporary feel. And as for the river view, well, it doesn't get any better than this. It's quite literally a stone's throw from Tower Bridge, which is why it has an asking price of a cool £2.5 million. Pounds. Claire's always said for the right investment, she's open to increasing the budget. Properties along this stretch of the Thames never go out of fashion, and long-term, a view like this is bound to underpin value. But what will Claire make of it? Well, here we are. Wow again. <laughs> They're all going to be wow, Claire. I know. Um, two and a half million pounds buys just under 1,700 square feet. Right. Here. Direct river frontage. Very direct. It is very, very cool. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is some view. One of the most, if not the most, famous bridges in the entire world <laughs> on your doorstep. How does it compare with the view from where we've been? You can't really top this, can you? So, yeah, with the view, this is just perfect. Completely. I think we might have another contender. And there was me thinking you had it all sewn up, Phil. As all these things, boils down to money. Yeah. Uh, and, and whether you feel it necessary to just spend two and a half million quid. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or whether you're happy with what you've seen already. Quite a lot of food ground. Mm. Yes. Well, that is the first time that I've seen Claire a bit flustered. And I haven't taken it too far. This is a terrific flat. This flat is about as good as it gets anywhere, in my opinion, along the banks of the Thames. But it's two and a half million quid. And uh, that might be a step too far. Oh, Phil, you don't make it easy on yourself, do you? And it looks like Claire has a lot to think about overnight. The first property we showed Isabel and Chris was too small. The second property was too loud. So there was only ever going to be one decision for their second viewing. It's straight back to the third property, the character-filled semi-detached cottage. Isabel liked the period features and Chris liked the fact that Isabel, well, liked it. This is an open and shut case. Or is it? It's just whether we can fit just a double bed. Yeah. What are we looking at? There's, that's four foot. Yep. Which is what they call an occasional double. Yes, which is what, Probably what, what we want. We want. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, is it a goer? Yeah, I think it's a goer. Yeah, definitely. Oh, it's a definitely for yeah. Isabel. I'd definitely like to go ahead. I suppose it's definitely a goer then. Finally, you've got there. On the South Bank in London, Claire's decided she wants to revisit the second apartment we showed her in Borough. Even the best river view in London couldn't match this. Since a river view was top of Claire's wish list, it was a gamble to show her this flat in the first place, but Phil's maverick ways seem to have paid off. Well, here we are again, Claire. Here we are again. I tell you, I wasn't surprised to be back here. No? Really? <laughs> Didn't think it would be, to be honest. Yeah. I can come with his family. Being fat, really. Yeah, as it turns out, it's not like Red River. Yeah. But to me, that's not what matters anymore. Yeah. So Claire's realised a cityscape can be just as stunning as a river view. But it's not a done deal yet. She wants her occupational therapist's opinion on the practicalities of living here. Right. So is this the master bedroom? This is. Currently, yes. Yeah. Well, Claire's quite obviously smitten with this place. To be perfectly honest, so am I. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for her. I just have to hope that her occupational therapist thinks she can make it work. 
But then again, Claire's already instructed me that I must bully her therapist into making it work. OK, my ideal thought would be to really take this wall out... Right. ..and knock it into a really large second bedroom, yes. if you like. Um, you've got, then, no problems with your turning space. No. There we go. Well, I can't tell who's smiling more. So I know, is, I know. Is oh, this well, all right? Yeah. Are we OK? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it certainly has the wow factor, doesn't it? it? Does. But I think from the wow factor, you still can look at it practically. And the good thing about it is you actually have the ability to change the space to suit Claire. Well, I'm problem. relieved. Yes. I am oh. relieved. I'm <laughs> no, I'm more relieved than you. No, Sounds like perfect. we've um, got a bit of negotiations on them. We have. So we will... Vacate the premises okay. and uh, find somewhere comfy. <laughs> Whilst it may not have been what we set out to find at the start, this flat has turned out to be everything Claire both wants and needs. Now it's down to me to get it for her. Well, we started on the South Bank. We did. Let's hope we can finish it here on the South Bank. You love it. I do. I really love it. It's as perfect as it can be. Okay. It's just wonderful. It's on at one and three quarter million pounds. Yep. <laughs> um, we've spoken to six or seven of the local agents about right. prices, comparable prices, likely prices. The flat next door has just sold at seven hundred and sixty-eight pounds per square foot. That's sold right. for one point four five. The flat that we're looking at is a better flat. Yeah. It's a bigger flat, it's a better flat, it's got much better views, and its terrace is three or four times as big. My suggestion is that we open negotiations at 1,600,000. I think that's likely to be declined. I think he'll want more than that. What's your take on that, on that approach? To be honest, I had hoped we were going a bit lower, but given what you just said about the square footage and the... Yeah. Well, I can completely see why it's not, you know, not appropriate. You're an expert, you know. I'll have to go about what you say. 1.6. Let's have a go. Sean, very good afternoon. It's Phil Spencer here, um, ringing about the flat you've been helping us with. It's been um, awkward to try and justify the 1.75, um, but I do have an offer, uh, and the offer that she'd like to make is for 1.6 million. Okay, many thanks. Bye bye. Well, the die is cast. Um, I don't think it'll be <laughs> but that's that's no problem. We're, you know, we're no. we're at the table. We're talking numbers. We're being serious. Okay. Meanwhile, at £215,000, this property is five grand over Isabel and Chris's budget. However, as they both have live-in accommodation provided with their jobs, I suggested that they rented the property out for a year to balance their books. I've got to ask this question. Do you think you will be able to bring yourselves to rent that house? Mm -hmm. we've, discu we've discussed it a lot. Yeah. Um, initially, no, because... The re and the reason is, it's not that I was talked into it. The reason is <laughs> you were talked into it. I, I wasn't, Chris. <laughs> the, re the reason is because we have spent a lot of time apart, um, yeah. as, as a lot of couples have. But we're in we're in a position now, fortunately, through where I've been posted to, that we're in a position where we can, for the next year and a half, actually enjoy living together. Yeah. Um, which may not be the case in a year and a half's time, mm. um, and we just feel it would be an opportunity. We. Would because of the work we do, it'd be an, op an opportunity we'd be silly to miss. We love the property. Mm. Um, ideally, what we'd be looking for is to get the property included with all the solicitor's fees, stamp duty, for within 210000 I don't think you could buy that house less than about 4000 so if you wanted everything all in for two ten, you wouldn't be in a position to offer more than two six. No. I think that's I think that's what we'll look at doing. Mm -hmm. Is not is an offer for two six. And you could come back from honeymoon to that house. 
Uh, I think we're sacrificing the honeymoon for this. Yep. Are you? Yeah. So you're going to spend yeah. your honeymoon in that house? Yep. <laughs> oh probably. my God, in which case I have to secure it. <laughs> in which case you've given me a fantastic negotiating tool. Yes. Shall I go ahead and do it? Yes, I've never, really. never rung up an agent and said we're making an offer and the money included in the purchase price was going to be spent on the honeymoon. That's, no, that's true. It yeah. is true. Yeah. Right, OK. We, uh, Isabel and Chris and I, have just had a long chat. Their maximum, maximum budget for everything, all told, was £210,000. So it's not possible to purchase a house at 200000 for less than four grand, which would leave £206,000 in the pot. Now, that £206,000 includes the money for their honeymoon. They intend to spend their honeymoon in that house. In London with Claire, waiting is the name of the game. After our low bid of 1.6 million, £150,000 under the asking price, I'm expecting the agent to call back with a counter-offer. Oh, sorry. Hi, Sean. Yeah, I'm good. Any news? Yeah. <laughs> We've got it. She's over the moon. Thank you very much indeed. Terrific. Delighted. Cheers. Good. <laughs> One point six. <laughs> Wow. What a deal. What a deal. What a flat. I'm speechless. So am I. I flat. Bartender, we'll have another couple of drinks, please. <laughs> With an incredible £150,000 saved off the asking price, I think you can afford more than one. In the Cotswolds, there's no cork popping just yet. Let me have a word. I mean, that that was our that was our really our, our best offer. And, and and but 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 let me have a word, and we'll see. Right. It's obvious that it's all very very tight yep. at her end. I think both of you are counting every last penny. Mm. Initial feelings at the moment is that. We came here, you know, we entered into looking for a property with a budget. Um, yeah. It wasn't picked off the top of our heads. I mean, that was really yeah. the maximum yeah. we could afford. Yeah. Um, we'll have a think about it tonight, but at the moment, we think that's that may be it for that house. Isabel and Chris decided not to push their finances into the Cheltenham cottage. Three years later, we're back to catch up with them. They're in their dream location of Morton in Marsh, but not in a property that we ever thought we'd find Isabel in. Isabel was a little bit shocked when I phoned her up and said I was really interested in a in a new build apartment. Um, she, which wasn't something that we we we'd considered previously. Um, however, when I managed to get her down here, explained where it was, um, had a look at it, and actually, I think when you came in, you were able to visualise what we mm. might be able to do with the place. Um, so I think it also, was a joint decision. Also, when, when it's you haven't got any furniture and you came in, it just it was a huge room, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and I just knew that I wanted to fill it with all things. <laughs> Which indeed you have. <laughs> Isabel's worked hard to transform this two-bedroom blank canvas into a beautiful home, but it didn't come cheap. I think the original budget was was 210. Um, we bought this for 220, um, so quite a bit more, but actually we had a really good a good firm understanding of what it was we were looking for um, mm. and this ticked all of the boxes so that's why we were, we were more than than happy to, to find the extra cash um, and hopefully it'll turn out to be a really good investment. It's great to see how focused they were on getting their perfect place but finding the extra money to get it did come with some sacrifices. We didn't move in here until just after we got married. Um, which actually was, carried which was me nice. over the threshold. <laughs> yeah. So that was lovely. <laughs> we didn't have a honeymoon because I remember there was a few there was a few tears at one stage um, because we the money which would have gone into a honeymoon um, we put into this property um, and we actually had our honeymoon last year. Last December. Um, so it was only two and a half years late, but it was worth it. Very, yeah, it was. 
As an army captain and a live-in nanny, Chris and Isabel often spend time apart, so having a home has given them a sanctuary to share. Having our own place where we, we naturally always come back to, it, it does mean that we've, we've spent um, a lot more time together. A normal life. Yeah, a normal life with me, with your dinner on the table, <laughs> uh, being a proper housewife. I eat a lot better when you're here. Oh, you do. <laughs> well, they do say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, and I can certainly vouch for that. Isabel and Chris have settled into married life together, and finding the right location was the key. Kirsty was was excellent in giving us mm. just you know, dispassionate advice. Really, I wouldn't say cold, but you know she was really clear in, in what decisions we were going to have to make. And you know, we're very grateful for that. And we're in a much better position to, to make decisions on our own as adults, probably in the future. We're brilliant at compromising now. <laughs> oh yeah, we are. <laughs> oh, I love hearing that word from our dear house hunters. And after a tempestuous search, it's great to see Chris and Isabel so happy in their marital home. In London, I'm also hoping to find smiles all round in another first home. I'm on the South Bank. I've come to see what our youngest ever buyer has done with our priciest ever property. I think I'll need to ditch my wheels of steel before I visit Claire in her rather swish penthouse apartment. Magic door. Claire, hey. good morning! Hey! How are you? Very, very wow. well. Lovely to see you. Hi. I can't deny I'm a little bit more than excited about seeing what she's done with the place. Oh, the lovely flats. It's not bad, is it? She looks fantastic. Thank you. And what a difference. Claire's transformed the whole place. It looks awesome. I like her. Absolutely awesome. Thank you. Goodness me. And it's, I know you haven't been in very long, have you? So I haven't. It's not, it's be not, quite so, a, not quite a month yet. How come it did take so long? It was sorting out all the builders and the architects. Yeah. I wouldn't do it again for a while. But <laughs> Hopefully I don't you have won't to, have to. That, that was the general that idea. The ever independent Claire's worked tirelessly with the architect to adapt the flat to her specific needs. This desk is quite handy because it can be. Where you can go, it's on, oh, really? the, on the end there. You have to do the first one. That one? Yeah. And take it up. Which is obviously helpful for me yeah. to have it at eye level for yeah. something. Okay. And then if you hear us, it can go Very cool. the other way. Very cool. This is like James yeah. Bond. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even Q couldn't fail to be impressed with the high tech gadgetry on offer all over this place. Open these doors. Cool. Open these? Yeah. To the side, just to the side. Oh, oh, it's <laughs> huge. Yeah, I know. So much of this whole process was about your own independence. So obviously, the technology is there, but you have to have the space and the sort of environment to set it up properly. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there are that many flats where it would look as sort of integrated as it has here. So. I think that's the smartest thing about the changes Claire's made. Every space and every detail is practical, yet the finish is uber stylish. Claire was always incredibly mindful about investing her money wisely, and it was something I was anxious to help her do. Even though the market's been turbulent 12 months later, the flat's already worth considerably more than she paid. It's in a fantastic location in Borough, and although she sacrificed her view of the river, the penthouse's panoramic view of the capital certainly makes up for it. She's also perfectly placed to make the most out of her social life with her fellow students in the many cafes and bars that are now right on her doorstep. When family and friends came to visit you for the first time, what did they think when they came round? I think they were quite amazed you. I mean, it's just, it's one of those facts where everyone walks in and just smiles. I mean, obviously, my flat's perfect for sort of socialising and all that. Yeah, that's the other benefit. Aside from all the adaptations and that, it's still a very good, you know, part of that, which is oh, absolutely. what it is, you know. And my friends love it. 
Yeah, but they do. <laughs> yeah. It's certainly a pad with party written all over it, but perhaps more importantly, Claire's also achieved the independence she so craved. I thought that was really very brave. Aged 18, making a decision like that entirely on your own. I was taking it to the extreme. <laughs> it paid off in the end. So. It did, oh, it did, absolutely. When you go in through the door... Yeah, no, it's definitely been worth it, without doubt. Yeah. It does just feel like home. And that's, you know, the great thing to have. Finding Claire the perfect home as well as a great investment has been an incredible journey for us both. I, for one, couldn't be happier with the outcome. Claire's such a great girl. It's been fantastic for me to come back, spend a bit of time together and have a look at the flat, which is an absolute knockout. 10 out of 10. More to the point, though, whatever your budget, buying a property is about buying a home. And that means different things to different people. For Izzy and Chris, it was about somewhere to start building their family life. Whereas for Claire, it was about a place to live as independently as she always dreamed that she could. This one meant a lot to me, so fantastic to see that I nailed it.